So in this tutorial we are gonna see how to use general purpose input output pins. For example, I'm making an LED blink and I'm reading button input. If I press the button, I can see on the serial monitor that it is printing the negative edge and the positive edge. So there is a parallel interrupt service routine that it is handling button input. So let's see. The first thing you do is that you open Visual Studio Code and then you install this uh, extension. If you haven't done this yet, I suggest you to watch my first tutorial about the Expressif IDF. Search for example project, you select this, then here you go, generic GPO, create project, okay, then we select the, the target device, JTAG, then we, we plug the, the device, we select the COM, uh, then uh, we select the flashing method, UART, then we open the menu config, up here, here you go, here you can select output and input pins, in my case I care about this and this, because I'm, not, I'm using one button and one LED, 8, I hit save, then build, the build has finished, now flash the device, make sure to select flash method UART. I flashed the device, so let's start the serial monitor. So as you can see I flashed the, the ESP. And now when I press the button I can see the output on the serial monitor. Now let's take a look at the circuit, it is very simple. When I click the button, I connect to the ground and so it becomes negative. And the, the interrupt service routine can intercept the falling and rising edge. So you have full control. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. And um, as the comment says, we configure four pins. Two in output mode and two in input mode. So two output pins, two input pins. These variables can be found into the SDK config here. And you can change this file using the, this tool. You can open this window by pressing this button. By the way, let's go back to the file. We also configure this bit mask. We'll see later why. Uh, let's ignore this stuff for now. Okay. Let's take a look at the main. In this first part, we configure output pins. So we don't need interrupt. Then we set up output mode. We pass the bit mask. We don't need uh, pull down or pull up mode. And then we apply the changes. In this part, we configure input pins. As the comment says, both pins are configured in pull-up mode. The first is configured uh, in uh, rising and falling edge mode. Uh, this means that uh, the interrupt service routine will uh, be triggered when the, there is a rising edge or falling edge. So, let's have a look at this part. Uh, we configure both input pins as uh, positive edge and uh, pull up mode and then we configure the first input pin to be uh, triggered when uh, there is a rising and falling edge then we create a uh, this queue and uh, we fork this function this function is doing something uh, very simple you enter a loop and uh, when 
mm, a new interrupt enters uh, the queue then we execute this instruction we are basically printing the GPO level of the input that we are uh, receiving then there is all this uh, boilerplate that is pretty standard you simply install the interrupt service routine to the input pins then we enter a loop we print the count, we delay one second and uh, finally we switch the level of the input pins to enable pull down mode you simply do this and uh, let's try to connect the button to GPO5 ok so I refreshed the device again with the new code and now if I press the button I have just one uh, debug log that tells me that the level uh, is 1 because the interrupt service routine is, the, is being called just one time on the uh, rising edge so this is it I hope this video was useful and uh, see you next time